Uh, today I'm presenting exploiting unintended feature leakage in collaborative learning. And this is a joint work with Luca, Emiliano, and Vitali, and we are from UCL, Cornell, and Cornell Tech. So here's an overview of my talk. So we consider the scenario of collaborative learning where multiple clients wish to train a machine learning model together and uh, one of the participants or the server could be malicious. And we demonstrate that collaborative learning provides a new attack surface. So throughout training, adversaries can learn information about other participants' data from the model updates. And moreover, the leaked information is not correlated with the learning task. So if the model is trained to predict gender given a face image, the adversary can learn information such as user IDs. So um, for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to just uh, introduce some background in deep learning very brief briefly. So a deep learning model maps the input data X to layers of features H, then to the output Y. And the input and features and output are connected by the weight parameters W. So for example, here the input could be a face image and the output could be a female class for a gender classification task. And the goal of learning is to find the optimal set of parameters that minimize some loss function. The minimization can be done using gradient descent. Um, so in each duration of training, we can take a batch of training data, compute the loss and the corresponding gradients, and then update the model parameters with the negative direction of the gradient. So one of our key observations is the gradient can reveal information about input data, which also enables our inference attacks in collaborative learning setting. So in collaborative learning, multiple clients wish to train a machine learning model together, and this can be done using uh, distributed or federated learning frameworks. And these frameworks has been used in real applications. So for example, Google's Gboard has been using federated learning to predict your keyboard input. And TensorFlow recently just uh, uh, published a package um, to facilitate uh, federated learning. So in this framework, um, clients trains the model with a central server, such as Google. And each client can keep their data locally on their own devices. So in other words, the data are never shared to uh, the server, and it's also not shared between the participants. So in each, iterate, each iteration of collaborative learning, each client first download the global model from the central server and each client can compute the training locally, which is by taking a batch or batches of training data and computes their gradient updates. And then each client can send these gradient updates back to the server. So the server is going to aggregate these updates and produce a new version of the global model. So the key question we investigate in this work is, how much privacy gain do we get? by sharing these model updates than sharing the raw data. So here's our threat model. So participants can access the global model in each iteration of training. And the difference between the models uh, in two iterations equals to the aggregation of model updates submitted by all the participants in the previous iteration. And again, the updates are just uh, gradients computed on a batch of clients' data. So by nature, malicious participant or the server has white box access to the model updates. And this is because they join the training and can observe the change in the global model. So the question now is, what information do these model updates leak? So recall that model updates are computed from gradient descent. And what we find is gradient updates can leak H, which are the features of the input data learned by the model to predict the output Y. So let's see a very simple example here. Suppose 
y equals to the parameter times h, the features. Then the gradients of the parameters equals to some scaled version of the features by chain rule, as shown by the equation here. And another our key observation is, even though the features h are learned to predict y, it can also leak properties of the input data which are uncorrelated with y. So for example, if y are gender classes for a, facial, uh, for a gender classification task, then features can also leak properties like facial IDs. So now we know model updates can leak information about input data. Now how do we infer these properties from the model, from the observed model updates by adversary? So this is essentially a learning problem and if we assume adversary has data labeled with the property, then we can use supervised learning to perform the inference. So inferring properties from observation is essentially a learning problem. And now I'm going to show how to use machine learning to perform inference, uh, inferring the properties. So this is what we call property inference attacks. So in each iteration, adversary can download the model from the server, and then adversary can query the model with the data that are labeled with the properties and computes the corresponding gradient updates. So these gradient updates can now be labeled with the corresponding properties. So adversary has a set of labeled updates. He can use that to train a property classifier, which takes a model updates as input and outputs a prediction for the properties. So once the property classifier is trained, adversary can query the property classifier with the observed model updates to perform inference, uh, inferring properties for other participants' data. Okay, so now let's see some results. I'm going to first show uh, results on inferring properties in two-party setting. And we use labeled face in the wild data set and the participant in this case trains on facial images with um, certain facial attributes. So here in the table, we show the target label that the model is trying to learn and the property that adversary wish to infer and the correlation between the task label and the property, as well as the attack AUC score in the final column. So as you can see, the AUC scores are very high and some of them are near perfect for some of the properties. And more importantly, the correlation between the task label and the property are very small. So this demonstrate that the model updates really leaked um, uncorrelated information about the input data. So next, I'm going to show how to infer time, the time when certain property occurs during training. And we used face scrub data set for this case. And the target here is to predict gender given a face image. And the property here are the facial IDs. And the participant trains on facial IDs, uh, facial faces of different people in different iterations of training. So here we show the probability of predicting different facial IDs in each iteration of training. So different colors corresponds to different facial IDs. And just by looking at this plot, just by uh, see the change in the colors, adversary can infer the time when, the, uh, when a certain person appeared and disappeared in training. So for example, in Iteration 500, um, you can see the orange curve drops and the green curves goes up, and that corresponds to the time when ID1 disappeared and ID2 appeared in training. So next, I'm going to show an active version of our attack that can work even better. So in active attack, adversary can create a model locally using multitask learning. So this model is going to predict both the task label and the property. And the updates computed from this model is going to contain information that can actively influence the global model to leak the properties. 
So here I show the ROC curve of predicting facial IDs in FaceGraph dataset. And the alpha value here is the strength of our attack, uh, active attack. If it's zero, then there's no active attack. So as you can see, for larger alpha values, we indeed get better AUC scores. And these demonstrate that adversary can actively bias the global model to leak properties by sending crafted updates using multitask learning. So now I'm going to show uh, experiments in multi-party setting. So in this setting, adversary only observe aggregated updates from all the participants. And here we use Yelp review data sets. Uh, and the task here is to predict the review score given the input text. The property here are the authorships of the reviews. So here in the plot, uh, we show the AUC scores for predict predicting different authors um, with different number of participants. So as you can see, the performance can drop as the number of participants increases. However, we still observe for some properties that adversary can still achieve very accurate inference. And this is potentially because these properties are so unique that their effect are not canceled out during aggregation. And for the case of Yelp, it is because there are some unique word combinations used by some users, and that really helped adversary to infer their authorships. So finally, I'm going to show a visualization uh, of the leakage in the model's feature space. So here uh, I showed three plots corresponds to um, the pro projection of features learned by the model in three different layers. So each, each point here corresponds to a data point. And the main task here is to predict genders, uh, which is denoted by circles and triangles. And the property here is to infer black or not black. This is shown by um, blue and red points. So as you can see, the separation between blue and red are visually very obvious in the first two layers of the model. So this really means the model learned features for uh, inferring the properties in the first two layers. And the separation between triangles and circles also appeared in the final layer. So the model also learned to predict genders, which is the main task in the final layers. So here are the takeaways. Um, we have shown model can unintentionally learn all kinds of features. The features that are helpful to infer the properties that are uncorrelated with its learning task. On the other hand, collaborative training can reveal white box uh, model updates to its participants and its server. And as a consequence, whoever can access the model updates, can learn information about participants' training data. So um, thank you very much. And our code is also available at my GitHub account. And now I can take questions. So questions. Please. Hi, thank you for the talk. Yes. This is Roxana Jambasha from Colombia. Um, there is work on differentially private collaborative training. Uh, do your attacks apply to that? Uh, we, we mentioned, do you mean the, the one applied to language models? Yes, we mentioned that work uh, in our, uh, as one of our countermeasures. And uh, so their, their work basically um, needs like millions of uh, participants to ensure the model is converging. And uh, in our case, our number of participants is much smaller in, than their case, so their method doesn't converge in, in our case. So the model doesn't perform well on its main task. Yeah. Okay, another question? So at least, yeah, before I ask one. 
So maybe quickly I ask. So can you say, is there a relation to overfitting and generalization in the whole thing? Because it seems um, that the updates carry a lot of overfitting things. Yeah, that, that could be one of the reasons. It, it's more like they, they didn't overfit in the sense that the model can still perform well on, on the test data. It's still generalized to the test okay. data, but it still learns features that, that can help for, for inferring other properties okay. along the way. Yeah. Okay, so last question. Hi, Lucas Tells from Samsung Research America. Um, this is just a, a vague thought, but it might inspire some other uh, research. Um, a friend of mine works in AI fairness and making sure that the training is not uh, biased in some way. So the last example that you showed where they were training for gender, but they seem to maybe have certain distributions based on race. Um, I, I'm just curious if uh, some of these abilities to detect these indirect properties that are sort of accidentally influencing things or, or leaked features uh, might allow the central part of the federated government or federated learning to sort of say like, hey, your inputs don't seem to be very fairly distributed. Uh, maybe you have too much of one property that we really don't want, or you're maybe training with the same input as this other guy. Uh, we can try to undo some. I guess maybe there are legitimate use cases to being able to infer some of the information about the input. Yeah, yeah that, that could be. Very interesting uh, approach to, yeah. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.